or something. It's like something like two acres of forested land are cleared every second, which is just mind-boggling, and all for animal agriculture. So we can save so much land, we can save so many species, for the save the biodiversity, we can save all the antibiotics that are going into these cows. Most antibiotics, I think something like, I can't remember the exact statistics, but it's massive, goes towards keeping cattle alive rather than humans. So we're on the tip of a knife edge, really. I'm a cup half empty sort of guy. My partner, Christine, she's a cup half full person. So she's the only thing that keeps me positive at the moment. Because if you just talk to me, I'm all doom and gloom. (laughs) (laughs) So I should pack up now. (laughs) Yeah, that's it. Head for the cliff. (laughs) Can you remember any of those stats that you said at the Vegan Garden Festival about the amount of animals that are killed every day? Well, I know 56 billion are killed every year. That's land animals. The number of sea animals number in the trillions, so they have to measure it by tons. You know, it's just trillions and trillions. And, you know, a lot of it is thrown away. I think, you know, a fifth of it is thrown away because of, you know, as bycatch. That includes whales and seals and dolphins and all the things that everyone loves. You know, they're all killed at the same time just to catch fish. And by 2048, we're going to see fishless oceans in 2048. You know, I'll be 90 by then. So, you know, if I if the vegan lifestyle is as good to me as it's all purported to be, I could still be alive then to see fishless oceans, which is scary. Yeah, I don't know if yeah. that's a good thing, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's just unbelievable. I went, I went on a holiday to Greece a couple of years ago and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't see any fish. There's no fish anywhere. The only other time I went to the Mediterranean was when I was a boy and it was teeming. Just in that short space of time, just fish are just disappearing. Same with the insects. Insects are disappearing. We've got a, our garden at home is normally covered in, you know, if we open the window in the middle of the summer, there's normally moths galore coming in. Now, this last summer, barely a fly came into our house. It's just quite disturbing. Yeah. So gardeners can help. Gardeners can uh, get this message across. There's nothing to be embarrassed about being vegan. It's the best thing you can do for the planet and for yourself and, of course, for the animals. A very big thank you to Cleve for taking the time out of his busy schedule to take part in the interview and also for being as open as he was. I admire him immensely for the passion and selflessness with which he stands up for animals and promotes veganism. If you've already read his book, Our Plot, and you've been hoping for a follow-up, you may have heard during our chat that Cleve alludes to a book he's writing at the moment, And the good news is that the book sounds as though it will contain more of Cleve's insight and honesty regarding what we can take from gardens and what we sometimes fail to put back and how we as gardeners can make a difference to the environment and be at the vanguard of the vegan movement. The bad news is it's not due for release until late summer 2020. So if anyone's interested in starting a petition or pressure group to pester the publishers and or Cleve to release it sooner, I'd be up for that. So get in touch. I was talking about this interview with the kind and wise Louise, who featured in episode 5 on allotments. We were discussing the pros and cons of being forthright on your dietary choices. On the one hand, you can risk coming across as patronising or even a bit confrontational if you take the kind of hardline approach that involves continually voicing your beliefs publicly and sometimes foisting them on people who don't necessarily share them. On the other hand, if you do believe in something strongly and you don't flag up instances of behaviour that you believe are causing animal suffering or deaths and you don't agree with that, are you doing the animals and yourself a disservice and maybe even condoning it by not speaking up? It's a tough call and there is no right or wrong answer. You just have to live according to the values you hold dear and do what feels right for you, no one else. So in an effort to be true to myself, as I said, the January will continue on the podcast next week when I'll be talking compost in general, but also which ones to choose if you want to avoid things like pea or animal-based products. So please join me for that if that's something you'd like to find out more about. And now on to the quiz and the treasure hunt results. And I'm very pleased to announce the winner of the quiz was Tim Howell, who turned out to be as good at answering questions as he is at setting them. Tim runs an annual horticulturally themed quiz on social media, which is always good fun. Time for second place were Sarah Prescott. So well done, Sarah. And uh, Alan Boobmarsh. So congratulations to all the top scorers and thanks to everyone else who took part. 
If you'd like to see the answers, they are now on the website. And I made a slight error on question 15 where I misquoted Eric Robson of Gardener's Question Time. At the beginning of each programme, he says, you'll be back to the garden in 45 minutes. And at the end of the show, he says, now back to the weeding. And I conflated the two catchphrases into you'll be back to the weeding in 45 minutes. But I'm sure if you're familiar with the show, you've got what I was asking. Actually, it's a catchphrase that's always annoyed me a bit because whenever I listen to Gardener's Question Time, I'm not sitting at my kitchen table with the wireless on in the background like it's 1956. I've got my earbuds in and I'm listening whilst gardening. So yeah, get with the times, Eric. People can listen and garden. And I know I misquoted Eric because I made myself listen to last week's episode of Gardener's Question Time. And I say made myself because for all of its wonderful advice, there's always a little bit of advice given that I think is misguided and sometimes it's even harmful and this episode was no exception when the lovely Pippa Greenwood who is usually full of fantastic advice advised a listener to get rid of some chippings that have been the result of the stump grinding of a tree trunk in their garden and there was no context given regards the size or the situation of the garden if it was a three square meter paved affair then fine but in many gardens you should be able to lose most of the chippings I had a humongous oak stump ground out at home and I used the chippings as mulch strewn thinly around the garden. And you probably know I'm all up for stashing stuff in the garden and I think they could have been lost in numerous places. So they could have been bagged up and left to rot down. A few bucket loads could have been put on the compost heap or compost bin, a bit given to the neighbours to use as mulch, a bit chucked under a hedge. As I say, there has to be a better solution than getting rid of these chippings from the site. This should be avoided as far as possible and this wasn't made clear on Gardener's Question Time. It wasn't even suggested how they should be got rid of. Would it involve a trip to the local tip in a car? Would you be burning them? So I thought that could have been handled better. And then there was a question on alliums, specifically why some don't come back year on year. And the panel gave their answers and let's say they were pretty different to the advice given by Jackie Curry in episode 8 of the podcast which I thought was interesting. If you want to hear what Jackie has to say on Alliums, you can go back and listen to the episode. She's made some fascinating discoveries while she's been the holder of the National Collection of Alliums about how to grow them and how to get them to come back year on year. So if you don't want to take the Gardener's Question Time panel's word for it, I highly recommend checking out her work. So that is enough Gardener's Question Time bashing. Now onto the treasure hunt results. And there ended up being six treasure hunt entries in the final run-in, as I couldn't whittle them down to any fewer. Four was the amount I originally intended to put forward to the public vote, so apologies for that. These final six were published on social media, and the people have spoken, and I'm pleased to announce the overall winner and recipient of the Fraser and Parsley Gardening Notes book is Sarah Prescott. So congratulations. And if you'd like to view her entry and the five other finalists, I've made a post about them on the Roots and All website. Just go to the blog tab and you'll see them. When I decided to run the treasure hunt, I thought it'd be a really good excuse for me and anyone taking part to get outdoors. And judging from the feedback I received, that's exactly what happened. And it seems people really enjoyed taking a bit of time out in nature and having an excuse to stop and really properly look at the things around them in the natural world. And I know it's become a bit of a cliche, but I've been really, really trying to put down my mobile phone and do more reading, more creative stuff and spend more time with my own thoughts. And I think it's been really helpful for me over the past couple of weeks. So if you're looking for inspiration this new year, I can thoroughly recommend the phone down, mind open approach. So that's it for this episode and it has been a long one. So thanks for listening and thanks for bearing with me and for all your continued support. It really means a lot and it helps to remind me that I'm doing something worthwhile when I have the occasional down day, like we all have sometimes. So if you'd like to help me out and you don't want to or you can't contribute financially to the Patreon or the GoFundMe, I understand, but please could you help me by leaving a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts. You can also follow me on social media and recommend the podcast to a friend. And don't forget to send me all your suggestions and ideas because I'm going to redouble my efforts in 2019 to make this an excellent year for the podcast. And I hope it will be an excellent year for you too. So thanks for listening and I'll catch you next Tuesday. You can download or listen to the podcast direct from the website www.rootsandall.co.uk where you'll also find my blog and a sign up form for the newsletter which gives you a weekly roundup of content, plus the inside scoop on things like upcoming guests. Or you can subscribe wherever you normally get your podcasts. Email me with comments and feedback at podcast at rootsandall.co.uk. Follow me on Twitter, Roots and All, 
Facebook Roots and All UK and Instagram Roots and All Pod.